bro. Okay. Let's have a word of prayer. We'll get started. Gracious Lord, this evening as we come before you, we praise you and thank you for the blessings that you've bestowed upon us. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy, which are new every morning. We pray and ask for the power, the presence of the Holy Spirit to draw near to us as we open, excuse me, as we open your word, as we discuss things that are in it. We need your aid. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need, dear Lord, all that you can dispatch to assist us tonight. You see, dear Lord, the, the things that we're trying to accomplish here. You said that we're to preach the gospel in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. We thank you for the assistance that you provided with the angels, the Holy Spirit. And dear Father, we want to use every, every opportunity, every resource that you have tonight. Send them down, dear Lord, that we may understand and apply these words that are bear in Jesus' name. Thank you for bringing your children out tonight and Sister Betty home safely and the Montagues. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. 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 Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. First, hello. <laughs> First, we're going to read a disclaimer because there are therapies in, in this one. And the disclaimer says, the information shared here does not replace the guidance and care of a qualified medical pr practitioner. Please consult your healthcare professional before participating in any colon therapy, particularly if there are any existing medical conditions or concerns. These statements have not been evaluated by the AMA or the FDA and are not intended to treat, diagnose, cure, or prevent any sickness. Today we're going to discuss some, there, there are a few um, colon therapies that we're going to talk about today. There are many, but we're going to look at these. And the quote is from Dr. W. Walker, and he, it's from his book, and he states, my study and intensive research on this subject convinces me more than ever that no treatment or healing procedure should ever be started without first giving the patient a series of colon irrigations in order to clean out the colon and remove the incipient source of infection. There is no ailment, sickness, or disease that will not respond to the treatment quicker and more effective than if it were, than it will after the administration of a series of colon irrigations. And he, this quote leads us to our first therapy, colon irrigation. What exactly is colon irrigation? Colon irrigation is administered by a knowledgeable operator trained and accustomed to this work, usually a nurse. Colon irrigations or colonics are glorified enemas, using many gallons of water at the rate of only one pint to perhaps two quarts of water at a time, then expelled each time. Colonic operators control the water flow in and expulsion out while the patient lies relaxed on an appropriate table, which is connected with the colonic e equipment. And on the side, you, see, you should see pictures of what the colonic table looks like. To be efficient, a colonic requires a half hour to one hour. During that period, 20 gallons of water may be, have passed through the colon. Remember, it took many years to accumulate whatever cor corruption that has adhered to the walls of your colon. Therefore, give the irrigation the chance to cleanse you thoroughly. Colonics help nature keep the body healthy. Our next therapy is enemas. And then 
we're going to talk. Okay. It says, what about enemas? And on this side, you'll see enema bag. And the second picture shows the attachments to the enema bag. There are many types of enemas to detox, detoxify the body. We will discuss the water enema. Okay, first, fill your enema bag with warm water, body temperature. Allow the water to in the enema bag to fill the tube and flow out to remove any air. Then lubricate the tube tip with a natural oil and never use petroleum jelly. It is best to administer the enema while laying on the floor, the bag about 12 inches above you, starting on your left side. It is unusual to take the entire <coughs> bag your first try. When beginning, inject only enough water until you feel full. If you feel any discomfort, turn off the flow immediately. Take slow, deep breaths through your nose and let them out through your mouth. This will relax your colon until the discomfort has passed. Start the flow again, adding more fluid until it becomes necessary to expel the entire amount. Repeat this until your bag is empty. Next time you, be, you might be able to hold the whole enema bag and will be able to continue until you have clear returns. If you do not find it possible to retain the full bag, don't worry. Getting the colon clean is the important thing. Now we're gonna discuss the recipe for no enema cleanse cleansers. And this enema cleanse um, is not re recommended for pregnant women or small children because the process of getting a massive peristalsis might encourage a mother to have a miscarriage. But that's what we're aiming for, normal. And it's the recipe is use all powder in this formula. One pound of powdered psyllium, a third pound of slippery elm, a third pound of alfalfa powder, and a third pound of apple pectin. Mix all of these together. And then for every pound, add two tablespoons of cascara or senna. And in this recipe, it's two pounds because you add those th one third pounds and that equals a pound. So it's two pounds, so you would be adding four tablespoons. Add a heaping tablespoon of this mixture to four ounces of juice or water in a tumbler with a top, with a lid. Shake it well and drink it immediately before it gets thick. Do it three times a day. You must drink a minimum of two quarts of water after. Three is even better if you are using this intestinal cleanser. This will stimulate the bowels to have a massive peristalsis. It is possible you will go to the bathroom four or five times a day. It depends on your body and your transit time. Various modifications can be made in this formula. People add carob to it, bentonite, or acidophilus. We will continue discussing the other um, colon therapies next week. Thank you. Wow. <coughs> Amen. Amen. We want a clean colon, don't we, brothers and sisters? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Ew. Because that's where our brain thought process comes from from the blood that is assimilated through the walls of the intestines. And if we've got some bad stuff down there, we can get some bad ideas in our heads. All right. Okay, let us pray. Father, we bless you and praise you and thank you. Lord, we thank you for the health nuggets that we receive on two, uh, Wednesday, Friday, and Sabbath from the ladies. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you would continue to bless us, that as we see these things, we would not just be hearers of the word, 
but that we would be doers of the word also. Bless us now as we open your word, as we look at this book of Daniel, chapter 5. May our hearts be warmed. May our ideas of your great love be strengthened and encouraged. And Father, help us to see and know that you are God who's going to do all your pleasure. You have a perfect time. And Lord, we ask that we would be fitting into your time schedule in our walk, in our life this time is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Lesson number seven, the fall of Babylon. The fall of Babylon. Let's go to the first slide. We're going to do our quiz. Here we go. Quiz question number one. The only chapter in the book of Daniel not written by Daniel himself is chapter four, and it was written by Nebuchadnezzar. True or false? True. True. Amen. All right. Next slide. Next slide. Here we go. Number two. God allowed Nebuchadnezzar to go insane because he wanted to make fun of him. True or false? False. That's, wow. the, that's, that's the most truthful statement ever made. Next slide. God does not want to make funny and uh, fun of any of us. And we read that in James chapter one, verse five where it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and abradeth not, the scripture says, and it shall be given him. Now that word or that thought of upbraideth means God will not make fun of us because we don't know something. I praise the Lord for that. Amen. 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 Question number three. As a result of his insanity, Nebuchadnezzar was humbled when he recovered, he acknowledged the God of heaven as the true God. True. True. True it is. Next slide. Amen. Amen. Question number four. God saves people by grace plus works that they're able to do. False. Okay. Just one false. Come on. What are we thinking? True. Okay. All right. Anybody else? False. Okay. That's two falses and a true. Okay. Let's go to the next slide. That is a false. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter two says that for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any should not boast. Okay. There's nothing we can do for our salvation. It's been provided in Christ as a free gift to all who will receive. All right. Next slide. Question number five. The word believe means to have implicit trust in Jesus Christ and to put our full weight on him. True. 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 Amen. Amen. That is true. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Our current, our current lesson tonight is the fall of Babylon. Next slide, please. We need our Bibles tonight. I come to with my Bible. <laughs> okay. Hope you got your Bibles tonight, brothers and sisters. Amen. Let's go to John chapter thirteen, verse thirty-four and thirty-five. John chapter thirteen, looking at verses thirty-four and thirty-five. John thirteen. 34 and 35. And while we're here, would somebody like to find Leviticus 19, 18, John 17, 17. I'm here. We'll read that and 17, 20, 21. And someone find Hosea 4 and verse 6. John 13, 34. Hosea 4, said, 6. I'm sorry? No, I just said Hosea 4, 6. I get that one. Okay, thank you. John 13, 34, 5 says, Jesus, the words of Christ in red, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this, by this love that you have for one another, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. Now I want to pay, I want you to bring your attention to the word men in verse thir in 35. Men is a supplied word. 
when you read it, if you read it without that word, it says, by this shall all know that ye are my disciples, if you have love one to another. So now Christ is saying that I don't believe he, he meant to have the word men in there, but Christ is saying by this love that we have for one another, all universes that haven't fallen, angels that haven't fallen, even the devil himself and his fallen angels will know that we are here, Christ's disciples when we have what? Love. Love for one, one another. Praise Brothers the Lord. and sisters, we need that love. Amen. Amen. We need that love. In our homes as well. Amen. Brother Glenn sent me a text this morning. That uh, Desire of Ages. What was that? 638 and 39? Yeah, 6, 638 and uh, 389. Okay. 638, 389. Talking about the love of Christ. It said, let me let me just share with you. Let me get this real quickly. Uh, give me one second here. Let me pull this text up. Um Okay. The love of Christ binds us together, and as we eat his flesh, we'll know what it's all about. All right. So now John 17, 21. I'm right there. Actually, John 17, 17. Jesus again, the words of Christ in red. John 17, 17. He says, Sanctify them by thy truth. He says what? Thy word, the word is truth. truth. Amen. The word is truth. And then in verse 21, it says that they may all be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, that they, may, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Amen. God wants to show the world tonight the love that he has for us in giving his son and then that the world would know or that all would know that we are what? His disciples as we manifest, as we demonstrate the love for one another. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Who's got Amen. Leviticus 19.18? Did anybody go there? Leviticus 19.18? Okay. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. Okay. Christ says we shall love our neighbor as ourself as him, because he is the Lord. All right. So then brother got Hosea 4 verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. And I will also reject thee. That thou should be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. All right. Amen. The Bible, brothers and sisters, I mentioned this once before. God gave the Holy Bible, and in it, the, the acronym for the word Holy Bible means he only left you basic instructions before leaving earth. Are you planning to leave earth, brothers and sisters? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh my, that was, that was, that was, that must have been the delay reaction. <laughs> All right. I was Listen. Muted. I'm sorry. I was muted. Oh, okay. Well, let's unmute them phones if you want to talk. God wants us to leave this earth. He's preparing a city for you and I. John 14, yeah. Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, he says, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Do Amen. you want to be with Jesus, brothers and sisters? Amen. Amen. We, must, we must open our Bibles and see the word that God has for us on a daily, even on a weekly, even on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. Next slide, please. It says, this is a fact. Revelation warns that what happened 25 years, 2,500 years ago in ancient Babylon will be repeated when? In the last days. Are we living in the last days? Yes. yes. Amen. These historical stories are prophetic. Yes, they're nice bedtime stories, but they also are prophetic messages for the last days in which we're living right now. Next slide, please. Our current lesson. 
the fall of Babylon, the fall of Babylon. Next slide. Ne next slide. Our first section tonight is the last night of Babylon. Let's go to Daniel chapter five. We're in Daniel chapter five tonight. All right, next slide. List five things that Belshazzar did that defied the God of heaven. We're looking at five things. We're in Daniel chapter five, verses one through five. They're going to pop up on the screen, but you know, it's good to have our Bibles. Let's go to our Bibles. Daniel chapter five, it says there. Are we there? Amen. 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 All right. Belshazzar, the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the gold and silver vessels from uh, which his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his princes, his wives, his concubines, what did they do? They drank in they drank them. In them. <clears throat> Verse four, they drank wine. Listen carefully. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver and of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. And verse five, it says there, in the same hour. Okay. What happened in Daniel chapter four in the same hour? Came forth. Okay, in Daniel chapter four, uh, what happened in the same hour? It talks about Nebuchadnezzar in the same hour. What happened? King, King lost his mind. Went and ate bread. Yeah. All right. He lost he his had mind. A dream. Because, all, right. all right. He set himself up. Belshazzar, the same thing. Set himself up. Go get those vessels. I'm mightier than God. I command Babylon. Go get them. And he began to praise the gods of gold, of silver, of brass of wood and of stone. Next slide. All right, you can just run through those, Sister Betty. All right, it says there that they made a great feast and they drank wine before the thousand. All right, next one. He commanded to go get those vessels. Next slide. Uh, are you seeing them faster than I'm talking? Yes. Yes. Okay. Are you on D already? Yes. Yes. All right. Next slide. Oh, you cannot see them? Brother Brian? There's a delay. I got a delay. Okay. Yes. I'm on D. Go All right. Me. Next slide. Okay. All right. Verse five says, in the same hour, when in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the pla the, the over against the wall, nope, nope, nope. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. So Belshazzar has got a front row seat to all that's transpiring right before him. He's praising the gods of gold and silver and brass and iron and wood and stone. God told us in the, in the book of Exodus chapter 20, he said, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Look at this calf that there right there. Remember when Aaron, excuse me, when Moses was up on the mountain getting the, getting the law of God. And uh, he left Aaron in charge. And Aaron said, uh, he fell, he, 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 he waffled under the, the command of the uh, mixed multitude and Israelites. He said, listen, we want to go back into Egypt, make us gods that will take us back. Aaron says, give me all your gold and all your jewelry. And, 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 and he got this jewelry and, and they put it in the fire and he melted it up. And, and then he, 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 fashioned, he fashioned an image, that golden calf. Brothers and sisters, 
we got to be careful because one step in the wrong direction will, will enable us to make another step and then another step. Because remember, when those spies went over into the Canaan land, they said there were giants in the land and the land eats up the people. So now how can it be a giant if, it's, if the land eats them up? How can Aaron in his right mind say, I just threw the gold into the fire and out popped, popped this calf? We have to be so careful because the devil will have us telling story upon story upon story. But we don't know where we are any longer. Amen. But Amen. I'm so thankful that the word tells us in, in John 17, it tells us that the word is what? Truth. And when we tell the truth, we don't have to worry about trying to make up a, a, a story to, to recover what we just said a minute ago or a week ago. The truth is the truth no matter what, and it's always going to be the truth. Next slide. It says there, in the midst of their blasphemy against God, what suddenly appeared and startled the entire assembly? Verse 5 and 6 says, it says there, in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw that part of the hand that wrote, verse 6, then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him. It says there, so that his, the joints of his loins were loosed and his and knees smote one against the other. Next slide. His thoughts troubled him. Next slide. He saw. Next slide. He saw the fingers of a man's hand writing on the wall. All right. So now the king saw that it's writing. And, 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 and naturally, he's going to do what? He's going to call for Daniel to come in and interpret this stuff, right? Who did mm -hmm. the king call? to interpret the writing. Next slide. Ashman. Babylon. All right. Hmm. He called the wise men of Babylon. Babylon. Have they ever been able to tell the king his dream? No. no. Not yet. Never ever have they been able to do that. And so here we are again thinking that we can do something. We can, we can interrupt the plan of God. Now, I said this before and I say it I'll say it again, and I'll say it more than one tonight. If anybody could tell the future, I would go to the to the tarot card reader, to the soothsayer, to the palm reader, and, and, and what well, I'm not talking about me personally, <laughs> but those who think that these can give me the Powerball numbers, give me the Mega Million numbers, give me the jackpot numbers, and I'll share it with you, brothers and sisters. The wise men of Babylon, the soothsayer today, the tarot card reader today, Madame Cleo today can't tell anything. Okay. <laughs> they can't tell a thing. But I remember Jesus said to the leaders of the church, you can, see, you can tell the signs of the time. No, you can tell by looking at the sky what the weather's going to be tomorrow. But you can't <laughs> discern the signs of the times. Brothers and sisters, we need to discern the signs of the times even Amen. now. Amen. Amen. Be Do what? Because the signs of the times are fast fulfilling all around us. Next slide, please. It says, all were the wise men able to interpret the writing for the king? No, not the wise men. No. No, no, no. no. Next slide. Next slide. We've been looking at these two verses, the past three lessons. Sec 1 Corinthians 2.14 and 1 Timothy 6.20. Spiritual things are what? Spiritually discerned. <laughs> God gave all of this. That means it's spiritual. And God is the only one that can tell what's going to happen. Next slide. Look, just pay attention to this one here. This next one, it says here. This guy here, Corbin Burnson. Corbin Burnson. A prophet without Arnie. Now, 
The character he plays on L.A. Law, divorce lawyer Arnold Becker, has little on his mind other than winning cases and making lots and lots of money. But Bernson has plenty on his mind to judge from an interview he gave the Washington Post. We should legalize drugs and spend the money we now put into the put into combating them into education. And you know, brothers and sisters here in Colorado, because marijuana is legal here, um, some of the proceeds goes to education. And I can't see what it's doing yet. Uh, they were talking about uh, our county here um, brought it in thinking that they can use these funds to build a new school. Guess what? Loophole, loophole, loophole. And so here we are selling a lot of marijuana, people moving here to, to buy this stuff and sell this stuff and, and, and can't do anything with the, with the revenue that they wanted, thinking they could use it for education. There's loopholes. Brothers and sisters, guess what? He says here, we should amend the Constitution to have a president for foreign affairs and a president for domestic affairs. And we should realize, he says, that religion has become an outdated answer to some of our problems. Mm. The belief I in an it. afterlife, the belief in an afterlife, he says, makes people disclaim responsibility for this life. People treat this earth like a motel room because they think they're going some other place. As far as I know, when I die, I'm not going anywhere else. So don't mess me up. Don't mess up my heaven. The sooner people, mm -hmm. realize, the sooner people realize we came from mm -hmm. apes and that's Ooh. the way it happened, the sooner we get a reality check on ourselves. We oh. have to follow your heart. And your heart is not guided by anything except what is in it. What is in us as thinking animals. If it means dismantling religion, we might have to do that. Brothers and sisters, if there are many more people thinking like this, gentlemen, we're in a world of trouble. Amen. Mm. Because, because you know what? In the book Adventist Home, it talks about how a family comprise lives in society the family comprises the church the church comprises or has a has a direct effect upon the society in which we live now those same children who are born who are who are brought up in your home if you make them good model student model citizens guess what they're going to be model citizens in the community also mm -hmm. they may be the model leaders of the community or the world that we that is soon coming upon us Amen. Brothers and sisters, the home life is so important to society today. And if this gentleman here uh, had his way, guess what? There'll be no more churches. There'll be no more religion. Yeah. And guess what? You come from an ape. You come from mm. the soup bowl. I didn't come from some no soup bowl. God spoke it into existence, and then he reached down into the dust of the ground, and he formed man. He made us out of the dust of the ground. Next slide, please. Amen. Daniel interprets the writing. Next slide. So now the wise men weren't able to tell the king his dream. So then who suggested that the king call in Daniel? Verses 10 through 12. Daniel chapter 5, verses 10 through 12 tells us. All right. It says, now the queen by reason of the words of the king and his lords came into the banquet house and the queen's queen spake and said, Oh, King, listen. <laughs> hope you're okay. King live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. There is a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy gods in the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom like like wisdom, all right, light and understanding and wisdom of the gods was found in him, whom the king Nebuchadnezzar, thy father, thy ki the king, 
I say thy father made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers. It says in verse 12, for as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams and showing of hard sentences and dissolving of doubts were, in, were found in him, the same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now, let Daniel be called and he will show the interpretation. I remember reading in one of the comments of Mrs. White on the book of Daniel. She said, those who bow before God will be able to stand before kings. All right. Amen. Brothers and sisters, when we bow before God in prayer, when we say, search me, O God, and know my heart, try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. When we say those words to God, he says, listen, I will answer the prayer of the broken and contrite heart. God wants to answer our prayers. He wants us to be able to stand before mean men and before kings and before principalities and powers. Why? To give an answer of the hope that is in us. How? With meekness and with fear. My brother's favorite verse, or one of them, the meek shall he guide in judgment. The meek shall he teach his way. God wants to teach us tonight. Are we willing to be taught? Are we willing to say, Lord, help me to be made will help me to be willing to be made willing amen next slide who suggested the queen mother the queen the queen amen so now as a result of daniel being selected what position did belshazzar offer to daniel if he read and interpreted the writing. All right, next slide. He said, listen, man, thou shall be third in the ruler of the kingdom. And I'm going to give you a chain of gold. I'm going to give you a whole lot of things. And, and guess what? I'm going to take care of you, Daniel. Brothers and sisters, how many today are enticed by uh, prestige or enticed by position how many are enticed by a gold chain god says i'm going to pave the streets of heaven with gold we're going to walk on gold we don't need to wear it that's right allow god to allow us to walk on those golden streets so that we can have all the gold all the silvers gods he wants to give it to us let us not sell heaven for a pittance of what this world has to offer. Tell the devil, get thee behind me, Satan. We must be bold with God and for God. Amen. Number, Amen. all right, next question says, before interpreting the writing, Daniel <laughs> fearlessly reminds Belshazzar, Amen. next slide, of, what's that picture look like? Nebuchadnezzar's insanity, because what? He failed to recognize and honor the God of heaven. Did Belshazzar already know this? Let's go to verse 17. It says here. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, let thy gifts be to thyself. And give thy rewards to another. Yet I will, I will read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. O thou king, the Most High gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. And for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, and languages assembled or excuse me, trembled and feared before him, whom he would he slew, and whom he would he kept alive, and whom he would he set up, and whom he would he put down. Verse 20. But when his heart was lifted up and his mind hardened in pride, he was disposed or deposed of that his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him. 21. And they and he was driven from the sons of men. And his heart was made like the 
like the beast, and his dwelling was with the wild asses, and they fed him with grass like oxen. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and setteth, and excuse me, and that he appointeth it to whomsoever he will. Amen. 22. And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all of this. So, next slide. Belshazzar knew all of this. Yeah. He knew it all. All right, next slide. What, what had Belshazzar done that had invoked the wrath of God. Look at verse 23. It says there, next slide. Daniel reminds him in verse 23. He says, but, but has lifted up thine heart, lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and they have brought the vessels of his house, meaning God's house before thee. And thou and thy lords, thy wives and thy concubines have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold of brass, wood, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know. And the God in whose hand is thy breath, whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, thou hast thou not glorified. So now, Daniel, he laid it out there for Nebuchadnezzar. I mean, for uh, Belshazzar. So now I want to, before we go further, I want to go back to verse um, five. What'd you say? I want to go back to verse five, Daniel chapter five and verse five. It says here, in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote upon, over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw... And the king saw the portion of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loosed and his knees smote one against the other. So now, brothers and sisters, as we continue to look in this, uh, this book of Daniel here, we want to look at some things because the prophecy said what th that this was going to happen. All right. So now it says it. Let's go to Jer Isaiah chapter 55. Not 55. Isaiah chapter 45. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 45. Or is it 44 leading into 45? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Isaiah chapter 44. Um, in verse 27, it says, that saith to the deep, be dry, and I will drive the rivers. Now, we're not talking about Cyrus yet, but we're going to look at this verse. That saith of Cyrus, he is my shepherd, and shall perform all my pleasure, saying to Jerusalem, thou shalt be built in the temple, thy foundation shall be built, laid. Look at verse, um, look at verse 2 of 45. It says, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in sunder the bars of iron. I will give and I will give thee the treasures of darkness, the hidden treasures, the hidden riches, hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. All right. So now. I'm looking for the verse that says that the king's knees would smite together and his loins would be loosed. So Bro, Glenn. One, Isaiah 45, 1. Verse 1, chapter 45. <laughs> okay, thank you, man. The one I didn't want to read. There we go. That saith, of, that saith, thus saith the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden, Listen what he's going to do to subdue nations before him. And God says, I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two leave gates and the gates shall not be shut. 
God says that I'm going to loose the loins of kings. Did it happen? We read it in Daniel 5 that when he saw the handwriting, what did it say? His loins were loosed and his knees smoked together, brothers and sisters. God is so particular. God means what he says, and he says what he means. Amen. So now, let's go. It says there, next slide. Next slide. What do you see there? Money. Money. Funny bill. money. <laughs> okay. $3 it's funny money. <laughs> okay. It's a three dollar bill with the number one Washington on it. Brothers and sisters, don't be sold a bill of goods. We must believe this word and we must believe it how implicitly trusting that God what he says in Isaiah 46. I declare the end from the beginning, saying my counsel shall stand and I'm going to do all my pleasure. When you make the rules, guess what? You can do what you want to do. And God makes the rules. A Amen. lot of people have been sold a bill of goods thinking that, listen, you don't have to keep that Old Testament. You don't have to keep the law. The law was done away with, but only one commandment of the law was done away with, the fourth commandment. Makes no sense to me, brothers and sisters. Next slide. Daniel interprets the dream. Give the meaning of the writing on the wall. Let's go next slide. It says, meaning, meaning, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Next slide. Tikel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found what? Wanting. wanting. I mean wanting. Wanting. You don't have what it takes to meet the meet the quota. Next slide. This says there, Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. So now I just realized this, you know, that this text right here is another one that can go with Daniel chapter two. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior. And it talks about uh like in Daniel 8, because remember. Prophecy, we, we, Daniel 2 is what? An outline prophecy. But then this verse right here talks about that it's similar to Daniel 8, where it talks about the Medes and the Persians, that Ram and the Hego, Medes and Persians, are going to conquer Babylon. And so, brothers and sisters, ask the Lord, let us, that we're always learning. Next slide. The kingdom is divided and given to another. All right, so now this question says, how soon, how soon was the prophecy fulfilled? Verse 30 and 31, Daniel chapter five, verse that 30. Night. All right, that very night, the scripture says there, in that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans slain and Darius the Median took the kingdom being about three score and two years old, 62 years old, he was just a year older than me today that he took the kingdom. Next slide. How soon was it fulfilled? That very night. Next slide. It says here, who took over? Who became the new ruler of Babylon? Next slide. Darius yeah, the Mede. Mm -hmm. Darius the Mede. All right. Next question. Next one. It says here, how does the book of Revelation Describe the fall of modern or spiritual Babylon at the end time. Let's go to Revelation chapter 16. Revelation chapter 16, beginning in verse 12. Revelation chapter 16, beginning with verse 12. How does the book of Revelation describe the fall of modern or spiritual Babylon at the end time? Revelation 16, verse 12, it says, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the a dragon. Uh, yeah, dragon. I missed him. Thank you. Out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils 
working miracles, going forth, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and to the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together unto the place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. All right. So now let's go there. And we looked at Isaiah. Let's next slide, please. All right. We looked at our Bibles. We just read Revelation 12. I mean, 16. And we just read Isaiah chapter 45. Next slide, please. Brothers and sisters, it says there that the river Euphrates is dried up. How did Cyrus get in there? He dried up the river. He, he diverted it upstream. See, when the, the, the and, 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 and first, Corinthians 10. Let's go there real quickly. First Corinthians chapter 10. I believe it's verse 12 that I'm looking for. First Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 12. The scripture says, First Corinthians chapter 10. It says there. I want to start at verse um nine uh, you know what that word neither that means something is before that okay so let, let's go to verse 11 it says now all these things happen unto them for for examples and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come verse 12 wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed what let's let's see far. Far. belshazzar the night that he was dethroned the night that he was killed had, he, he, he thought he, he lifted himself up. Go get those vessels. He defied the God of heaven. What he actually did was he brought in a mixture of what? Paganism and Christianity. In the last days, what's going to happen? There's going to be a merger of church and state. There's going to be a merger where the pagan churches, we see it clearly by all of the statues in the churches, by all of these idols in the churches, we see it clearly. He said, wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. He, fall. He, he lifted himself up the night he fell. Next slide, please. The, uh, the Euphrates was dried up, and it prepares the way for the kings of the east. Who are the kings from the east? Who are the kings of the east? Meo Persia. All right. Amen. And they came right on time, brothers and sisters. That's, the, that's the, uh, the phenomenal thing about the word of God. God says it, God does it. Amen. And even if we don't believe it, God's still going to say it or said it, and God's still going to do it. But our, our, our benefit to us is that we believe it, and then we act on that belief. Amen. Next slide, please. So now, what happens when the kings of the east Come to deliver God's people. Verse 18 and 19. Revelation 16, 18 and 19 says. And there were voices. And thunders. And lightnings. And there was a great earthquake. Such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake. And so great. And the great city. Was divided into three parts. And the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. So now, what happened when the kings of the east, next slide. Great Babylon came in remembrance before God. Next slide. Let's look at some characteristics of modern Babylon. Let's look at some characteristics of modern Babylon. Next slide. It says here, the same events that caused the fall of ancient or literal Babylon will cause the fall of modern or spiritual Babylon at the time of the end. Next slide. What does the Bible call 
Babylon, Revelation 17, verses 1 and 2. What does the Bible call Babylon? It says, And there came one of the seven angels which had which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying, Come unto me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornications, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So now, what does the Bible call Babylon today? Next slide. Calls it the great whore. The great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Now, in Bible prophecy, or in, in, in the Bible, let me not prophecy, in prophecy, but in addition to the Bible likens, let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, we looked at this verse once before. Jeremiah 6, verse 2. Because why would God call it a whore? Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 2. It says here in Jeremiah 6, 2. Are we there, amen? Amen. amen. It says, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate what? Woman. Oh. Now, again, that word is italicized, so it was added. But God likens his church. How do we know? Let's go to Isaiah chapter 51. Isaiah chapter 51. Isaiah chapter 51, looking at verse 16. Isaiah 51 and verse 16. The scripture says there, are we there, amen? Amen. amen. So now it calls Babylon a great whore, which sitteth upon many waters. Verse 16 says, I have put my words in thy mouth, and I have covered thee in the shadow of mine hand that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth and say unto who? Zion. Zion. Thou art my people. So now God's people are Zion and Zion are God's people. And God says, I have likened the daughters of Zion. Okay, daughters are what? Women. Likened the daughters of women. I've likened the daughters of Zion to a calmly and delicate women. So now what is the whore? And why is it a great whore? Let's go to Revelation chapter 17. We were just there a minute ago. Talks about a great whore. So now, we looked at the, the if God likens the daughter of Zion to a calmly and delicate woman, then this other whore, which represents what? A particular system of worship or, or a, 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 a church of some kind, who is a whorish church and has committed fornication, that means she's got many lovers, means she's got many children, okay? So now it says here in Revelation 17 and verse 15, let's, let's look at these waters. 15 says, and he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are people, peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. So this whore, or this woman, or this church, sits upon what? Many waters, or many churches. Many people are under her uh, domain, or, or control, or, or under her command. So now, brothers and sisters, let's go to the next slide. We just went there. I jumped ahead of things. Let's go to the next slide. The waters that the whore sits upon represent, next slide, peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Next slide. So what is the great sin of Babylon? Let's look at it, verse 2. We're right there in Revelation 17, verse 2. It says, with whom, talking about this whore, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Now, we, I, I'm looking for some verses. And if somebody can help me, thank you. But I remember when Jesus talked about um, when he called the disciples. He said, nobody puts new wine into old skins. 
at the same time, he's also talking about doctrine because he's talking about teaching. So now, and, and you all help me because I don't claim to know it all. I'm, I'm looking to learn as well. So would you say that the wine is the doctrines or the teachings of this whore or this great Babylon? Yes. Is that a fair assessment? Yes. Okay. It, it, does anybody have any other Bible for it? All right. Let's let's get together. Well, not let's let's get together. But, you know, we need to understand because... If all the nations are drinking of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, what is it that they're doing? Because you also can look at Daniel chapter 5 when Belshazzar poured wine into God's vessels and he began to drink and they began to what? Commit, for, uh, commit um, oh. praise the gods of wood, stone, and metal and, and all of these things. And so, you know, we want to be able, brothers and sisters, to show from the word of God. Now we can probably read it in the spirit of prophecy, but we need the Bible itself to tell us these things. All right. So now, next slide. What is the sin of, 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 of Babylon? She with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. All right. Next slide. All right. Satan's technique is mixing a little error with what? Truth. 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 Making error appear spiritual or religious. And then number three, blessing you while living in sin. Now, here's the thing, brothers and sisters. Um, when people ask you to pray for things, Nothing wrong with praying for people. But now one thing they need to understand is God is not going to answer that prayer so that you can continue to fight or war against God. Does that make sense? Yeah. Absolutely. Amen. So therefore, therefore, Satan's technique is to make error appear spiritual or religious. So when we pray and, and, and God answers prayers and and people pray and, and they get blessed with a job where they got to work on the Sabbath or they get blessed with money and they go buy something or they continue to live a righteous lifestyle. God did not give that blessing. God does not bless evil. James chapter one. Look at this here, right? James chapter one. It says here. Let no man say. James chapter one. Verses 12 through 14, I think it is. James 1. It says there, verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved, my beloved brethren. Every what? Every good, good gift okay. and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow oh, okay. of turning. God's not going to give us, brothers and sisters. He's not going to tempt us with a job where we would have to work on the Sabbath. That's not his uh, uh, MOA. God is truthful. God is true. God will tell you what, what he expects. Uh, what is it? Micah 6. He has showed thee, O man, what is right, what is good, and what that the Lord require of thee. But to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. I, I messed that verse up. Let's go there. Micah 6 and verse 8. I hate messing them up. Micah 6 and verse 8. Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah. One of them minor prophets. Micah chapter 6 and verse 8. Minor prophet, but he hath a powerful message. Micah 6, 8 says, He has showed thee, O man. Are we there, amen? Amen. amen. What is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee? But to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. 
So the devil's plan or the devil's technique is to make us think that we're all right when we're all wrong. Jesus said in Matthew 24, when the disciples asked him, what is the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? First thing Christ said, take heed that no man deceive you. Amen. Next slide. Next slide. All right. Turning them red. What does God call this harlot who defies God by mixing paganism and Christianity? Revelation 17 and verse 5. It doesn't say who. It says what does God call this harlot? Revelation 17 and verse 5. The scripture says, And upon her head, was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So what does God call? Next slide. He says, Babylon the Great. Babylon the Great. Next slide. All right. According to Revelation chapter 18 and verse 2, what message does God proclaim about modern or spiritual Babylon? Revelation 18, 2. What message does God proclaim? He says, and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils. Next slide. And the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every what? Unclean. Every Unclean. And hateful bird. Amen. Amen. Unclean and hateful bird. Babylon the Great is corrupt. It's full of devils. Next slide. How widespread, how widespread will be the influence of this mighty modern spiritual Babylon? In the last days, Revelation 18 and verse 3, how widespread for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. So how, how much of or how widespread? Next slide. All right. All nations. All nations. What's that building there in New York? United Nations. The United Nations, where all nations are there. Right there, all nations are being, are drinking of the wine of the wrath of Babylon's fornication. They got this prayer room in, the, in, the, in that building. And, and if you want to go pray to Allah, you can go pray to Allah. You want to go pray to the tree? You could go in there and pray to the tree. All nations, he, they, they want to be the God for all people. Brothers and sisters, But there is but one God. Amen. But one God. Next slide, please. Number, I'm sorry? And the okay. merchants rich. One more time, you're breaking up. The merchants Yes. They wax rich. Amen. They wax rich. Now, let's go on here. What loving message does God send to his people who are in Babylon? Verses four and five. Next slide. God gives a message. And it's in the message of love. He says, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Why? For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. But the appeal that Christ made, he says, come out of her, my people. He says in Matthew chapter 11, he says, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, I want to give you rest. Are you tired of fighting, brothers and sisters? God wants to give you rest. Next slide, please. 
It says here, if you ever, if you ever find yourself ensnared by this Babylonian system that unites paganism and Christianity. Next slide. If you ever find yourself ensnared there, next slide says, will you heed the warning of God's word to come out of this system of falsehood, this system of committing fornication, this system of being made drunk with the wine of doctrine. Brothers and sisters, next slide. Jesus has done so much. He created the world in seven days, not thousands, not millions of years. Then he came to this earth as the sinner's only hope, because as soon as there was sin, there was a savior. He realized that when he came, he would have to die upon that cruel cross of Calvary. Oh, that's a pretty picture. He's nice and clean and fresh. His tunic is white and bright, but guess what, brothers and sisters? They beat our Lord and Savior most unmercifully. They ripped his back out with that cat and nine tail. They spit in his face. They snatched the beard out of his face in order that he might save you and I. Oh, brothers and sisters, at the time of the evening sacrifice, as the priest was about to offer the lamb in the sanctuary, in the, in the, in, in the, in the sanctuary, there was a great earthquake. Jesus said, Lama, Lama, Sabathani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Then the scripture says that he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost. At that very moment, brothers and sisters, the lamb that the priest was going to slay because of the earthquake that took place, the lamb, because of the earthquake, the priest was startled. The priest dropped the knife. The lamb got up and ran away. The veil of the temple was rent in twain from top to the bottom. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, in that very moment, at the time of the evening sacrifice, Jesus died right on time. And because he died, we live. Oh, but I'm so grateful that he rested in the grave that Sabbath. But early Sunday morning, he rose. And, and when he rose, he took captivity ta captive. When he rose, there, though, that earthquake caused many graves uh, and many tombs, uh, many of the saints to rise. When he rose that Sunday morning, they came out of the graves and began to walk into Jerusalem. I can imagine stately Adam. Possibly even Methuselah. Giants, brothers and sisters, walking and the people are astonished, just like Nebuchadnezzar or like Daniel when he got the dream and he was astonished for one hour. Could you imagine the people? Maybe even Solomon or even Stamson walking amongst Jerusalem. But then he ascended on high and he came back with word that the sacrifice has been accepted. What I have done for you, God, the Father will accept. And then he came back and he began to walk and he said, Mary. She said, Rabboni. Then he went in that upper room and, and, he, and he walked through the doors. Brothers and sisters, I'm so thankful for what Jesus has done. But then, 1844. At the end of the 2300 days, Christ moved from the holy place because when he ascended on high, he became our heavenly high priest. 1844, October 22, 1844, he moved from the holy place into the most holy place to begin a work of investigative judgment, which he's performing, performing even now. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25 says, wherefore, he is able to save to the uttermost all that come up to God through him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for us. He shed his blood on Calvary. Right now he's pleading his blood in the most holy place. As that lamb, the Lord's goat that was slain, he's shedding his blood in the sanctuary. Father, my blood was shed for Brian Swan. My blood was shed for Glenn and, and Troy and Brother Wally and Michelle and Sister Johnson. My blood was shed for everybody on this line tonight. If they'll only give me their heart, I can do the work that I'm doing now. I can save them from themselves. Oh, but brothers and sisters, 
Look at that last picture on the right. Christ is even now interceding in the most holy place. When the king, when the when the high priest on the day of atonement, at the time of the evening sacrifice, threw the scepter down. All the sins are now placed upon him. He's now coming out of the coming out from that veil and coming through the holy place into the court. And then he's going to go outside the court and he's going to place the sins on that scapegoat. Oh, brothers and sisters, Jesus is about to leave the most holy place. Are your sins beyond the veil? Have you confessed all of your sin? Have you pled, Lord, take my heart, I can't give it. Brothers and sisters, our sins at this point right now must be taken into the heavenly sanctuary. They must be placed upon that scapegoat. They must be in the sanctuary because when Jesus leaves, all the sins of the world are on him. He's coming back. He's on his way back. The scripture says he's got a, he's got a sickle in his hand and, it, and, it's, and the angel says, thrust in thy sickle and reap. For the harvest of the earth is ripe. We don't know how long, but God does. Each day we need to be preparing our hearts as if it were our very last day. Brothers and sisters, the theme of the Bible is Jesus Amen. and how he died to save men. The plan, of us, the plan of salvation assures us he's coming back again. Are you ready for Jesus to come? Oh, I wish I could play that song right now. Beautiful lady sings it. Um, all right. Brothers and sisters, I'll play it for you next week. Time is well spent. Time is far spent. Are you ready for Jesus to come? Father Amen. in heaven. Father in heaven, as we come before you tonight. We're so thankful for the thought that you've given to us. That you said Babylon would fall at a certain time. You said that Jesus would arise at a certain time. Jesus would become or begin his, priest, his, uh, his work here on the earth at a certain time. Jesus would stop that work at a certain time. Jesus would be baptized at a certain time. Lord, you're coming back at a certain time. Our hearts are longing for that day, but Lord, we ask that you would help us to be ready. Father in heaven, we bless you and praise you. Help us to surrender our will to you is our prayer in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, tonight, as every head is bowed and every eye is closed, is it your desire to give your heart afresh to Christ tonight? Saying, Lord, Amen. take my heart. I can't give it. Raise your hand with me. Amen. Father in heaven, you see these hands. You've done so much for us. We don't want it to be in vain or for nothing. So, Lord, help us to surrender tonight. Help us as we, we, as we recommit our hearts to you. Thank you, Lord. Give us a peaceful night rest. Wake us in the morning to see a new day dawning and we'll be careful to praise you, thank you, and honor you because you truly are worthy in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, be Amen. faithful. God is counting on you to be faithful. We look forward to meeting with you on Friday evening at six where we will be looking at the sanctuary. God bless you till that time and invite a friend in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Amen.